Congressman Lasserette. Thanks again for joining us this week. Yep. It's been a, uh, another busy week. Kind of wanted to start off on a, uh, a different topic. Normally we're talking a whole lot of policy, but this week we actually had a couple of elections. Uh, and we had an election for governor in Virginia, as well as one for governor in New Jersey. A lot of people look at these 2013 uh, elections, these off-year elections, and think of them as kind of the proverbial canary in the coal mine. Uh, what happened in those two elections, and what can we glean from those results? What do they mean for 2014? Well, first of all, I, I think you can read too much into these off-year elections because off-year elections, you really the the most partisan of the partisans show up uh, in, in these uh, turnouts above 40 percent, but they're not inconsequential. Uh, and I would throw one other race in there, and that's the uh, the special election in uh, the Alabama seat. Right. And you know, my my uh, armchair analysis of all of that is that it was very good news for everybody. Um, except perhaps for the president and his health care law. And I say that uh, because on, on the, the sort of uh, midstream, mainstream Republican side, Chris Christie, uh, I just was reading, he got 51% of the Hispanic vote Unbelievable. In, in a very blue state, and he wins walking away as a Republican who is, is a centrist and is reaching across the aisle. So I think that that, that is, is pretty startling. In Virginia, uh, the papers here were talking about how Cuccinelli was going to get blown up by 10 points and so forth and so on. It wound up being a three-point race, and, and that's a product of a couple of things. One is uh, Terry McAuliffe, governor like McAuliffe, pretty flawed candidate that in most years would not win. Secondly, Virginia for five decades has uh, elected a Republican when the White House is in control of uh, uh, the Democratic Party. Uh, but the fact that Cuccinelli came so close I think will hearten some Tea Party folks who say, look, he's a very, very, very conservative guy. Where there's a divergence, the Tea Party thinks, well, it's because, you know, so the, the establishment of the Republican Party wouldn't kick in and help Cuccinelli. I happen to think if you look at the voting results in Northern Virginia, he got drubbed yep. because he was supported by people like Ted Cruz who spearheaded the shutdown of the government. Um, so that's interesting. The other one down in Alabama, a guy named Byrne, uh, defeated a fellow by the name of Young for an open seat uh, vacated by Joe Bonner. Uh, and Byrne was supported by the Chamber of Commerce. He uh, is a, a, a middle-of-the-road Republican, whereas Mr. Young uh, didn't believe that the president was born in the United States and a whole lot of other things. So really a, a, a victory for the establishment of the Republican Party. Uh, but the bad news for the president is the exit polling in Virginia pretty clearly indicated that people are not really happy with the Affordable Care Act, the President's health care law. Uh, and if this set of problems continues, and, and today um, Secretary Sebelius was quoted as saying that the numbers are going to be pretty small. Uh, Lisa Murkowski, Senator from Alaska, said that she's gotten numbers from the state of Alaska, and it's something like three people have signed up in a month. It's really not great. That's, that's not, <laughs> that's, it's, it's not going to be a good day at the office for for the administration and the rollout of this bill. Well, and that, that brings us to the second issue I want to talk about, which is the president's health care law. Uh, obviously, he's come under a lot of criticism for this rollout, and 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 Secretary Sebelius, in particular, has in, in faced some pretty intense mm -hmm. uh, grilling on the Hill. What is the long-term ramifications of this? I mean, I saw that Mary Landrieu, the Democratic mm -hmm. senator from Louisiana, was introducing uh, legislation uh, that would essentially grandfather in uh, uh, pre-existing health care uh, plans because people are losing their health care plans, mm -hmm. even though the president said if you like your health care plan, you right. get to keep it. That's not turned out to be the case. Right. Uh, we're actually starting to see Democrats break away and, and, and push back on this. Is it going to get worse for the president and his health care law before it gets better? Well, if it gets better. I mean, <laughs> it, it's going to get worse. Uh, there's no doubt about that because even by his own estimations, all these brainiacs they brought in from Silicon Valley, they're shooting for November 30th, which is still, you know, uh, three weeks away. So you're going to have a drumbeat for the next three weeks that things aren't going so well. I don't think they're going to fix it by then. Uh, and then even if they fix the website and so you get more people enrolling, you still have the president very clearly, repeatedly said, if you like your health care, you get to keep it. That's not the case. And now they've sort of pivoted, well, you can get stuff just like it, and that <laughs> really isn't the case unless you pay more. Uh, and, and people are going to begin to, I, I think, turn on this. And, and, and that, again, goes back to the government shutdown. Both parties were at fault, you know, even though most of the blame went to the Republicans for the way that they handled it. 
But for the president not to acknowledge that there were some difficulties in the rollout and maybe some parts of the Affordable Care Act weren't really that well thought out and so to not hit the pause button I, I don't think is going to stand him in, in good stead. He doesn't care. He doesn't have to run for re-election. But as we get closer to the 2014 midterm elections, you're going to see senators like Mary Landrieu, Begich of uh, Alaska, Kay Hagan of North Carolina, Mark Pryor of Arkansas, they're going to begin to look for the, you know, the exit sign and, and, uh, and then the House will follow. Well, and it seems like that, you know, during the debate over the government shutdown, Democrats were united in both chambers. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have any changes to Obamacare because mm -hmm. they had the, the kind of counterbalance of this very unpopular shutdown yeah. that was getting blamed on the Republicans. Yep. Now that that's gone, it appears that Democrats for the first time are kind of having to be forced to, to look at the realities of the president's health care law and its rollout. And I, it's been kind of stunning to see a once united caucus in both the House and the Senate really start to come apart and really start to see some Democrats pushing. Do you think that that means we'll actually get legislation out of out of both chambers that would act, make it to the president's desk that would affect the president's health care law in any substantial way? I, I, I think more than that, uh, I would be shocked if these problems continue. If the president himself didn't say, you know what, Let, let's delay the implementation of this individual mandate for a year. And, and the folly of the Republicans' shutdown strategy is such that, I mean, you already have the president going around the country saying, well, the reason that the economy only added 130,000 jobs is because the Republicans shut down the government. The reason that this is happening is because the Republicans shut down the government. And, and so I, I think that we, the Republicans inadvertently have given them cover to say, well, we got to, you know, we, we have to call a halt to this, delay the individual mandate, not because there's anything the matter with this law that I like so much, but because the government, the president of the <laughs> shut down the government. And, and you know, that, that's not true, but, but I would be shocked if we don't reach that point. This, this law was not ready for prime time. As we've said before, it's got some good parts, but it's got some parts that, that really don't make a lot of sense. Uh, and and the right way to take care of it is is for the two sides to sit down and save the good and throw out the bad. Well, speaking of the government shutdown, uh, you know we have pushed you know kicked the can down the down the street a little bit. You know the the, the deal to to open the government up and, and raise the debt ceiling was a temporary one, mm -hmm. uh, and we've got this budget conference committee that's come together. They've they've met. Uh, once they've broken into smaller groups to talk about trying to reconcile differences between the House and Senate budget, some very significant differences. What are your thoughts on them actually getting a deal done when we face this problem again? Are we looking at another government shutdown? Are we looking at another debt default? Well, uh, two, two different things. One is I don't think this budget committee is going to resolve the nation's problems. Surprise. And, and I don't think they're going to come up with the big deal. As a matter of fact, the, both sides are saying, don't expect the big deal, don't expect the big deal, which means small ball, which means kicking the can down the road. I don't think that the Republicans are going to repeat the mistake of shutting down the government. You will have the Ted Cruz's and, and other people in the House, uh, on the House side saying, let's do it, it's a great idea. But by and large, I don't think that you're going to, you're going to have that uh, be the Republican strategy. But likewise, you're not going to fix the country's problems. I, I was in uh, Jacksonville, Florida last night for our client CSX at an event for Speaker Boehner and that's exactly what he said. He said, I don't think this conference committee is going to work it out. The other thing that I found, you know, even though I, I know him pretty well, he was very open and candid and said, look, uh, I told these guys in my conference that this shutdown strategy was stupid. He said, but when you're the leader of a, a team, and the team gives you instructions, you got to go execute those instructions no matter how stupid you think they are. <laughs> uh, and so I did everything in my power to show them how stupid it was, but at the end of the day, uh, I was right, it was stupid, and, and we had to reopen the government. So I, I, I think John Boehner will do everything in his power to make sure that that doesn't happen again. So we're not going to get a big deal, but we do, we're unlikely to see another government shutdown. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are some people that are just happy that sequestration is here. So you never have to cast a vote uh, if you're a Republican or a Democrat. You never have to make a deal, uh, and you just continue to govern under these continuing resolutions that have automatic spending cuts in, in discretionary and defense programs and, and call it a day. Well, once again, thank you for your time. We thank appreciate you. it. Look forward to talking next week. Me too.